from the Bob Mills Weather Center, meteorologist Aaron Reeves. Well, we're expecting things to get pretty active here over the next couple of hours as this storm system moves east. You can see quite a lot of storminess associated with this as it does so. We have one complex of storms in northwest Oklahoma, north central Oklahoma, barreling eastward. This thing's rolling east at around 50, 60 miles per hour. Now moving in on Enid, you can see warnings have been extended well out ahead of that now into uh, Kay and Noble County, uh, mainly for up to 70 mile per hour winds and hail up to the size of quarters. That's what we're expecting as these move east. We also can't rule out a quick spin up tornado along the leading edge of that. Also a storm uh, in south central Oklahoma moving through Sulphur and Armour. This cluster of storms could clip our far southern tier of counties as it moves east and then this line will likely uh, involve the whole area as the night goes on. So a busy night ahead, a lot of wind, a lot of lightning, a little bit of hail and a lot of heavy rain. So we do have a lot of storm trackers out on this line. You can see we have Brandon there, Vaughn there. They're going to follow this east where it rolls east, but you can see from uh, north of Medford into Kansas down through Enid, then down just to the west of Kingfisher, Watonga, and then uh, kind of curving back into Texas. Once again, moving east rapidly, 70 mile per hour wind, quarter size hail, the main threat with those right now. Similar story with the storm moving in on Ardmore. Once again, most of this is going to stay south of our viewing area. Sequoia is in place in Pottawatomie County, but we'll watch these in case they clip southern Pittsburgh County and then uh, points on eastward from there. So we'll watch these, but eventually this line will take over the whole area. Our tracker is once again out. Vaughn Castor, he's in West uh, Oklahoma. West Oklahoma right now. Also, Brandon Wells, they're on that northwestern storm. Uh, watching that as it moves east towards Sequoia once again. He's down tracking the southern complex. He'll keep an eye on that for us. And then in the metro, we have Bob Roloff getting into position just southwest of Tulsa. We also have John Durkee out. Uh, Alan Crone's here. Jalen's here. We're going to watch this for you. Nothing to get panicked over. We've been through this before, but just kind of be aware overnight, have a way to get warnings uh, in case you do have to take those precautions and maybe seek shelter briefly. So here's what we're expecting. A low end risk for a tornado. Those would be kind of those spin up in nature tornadoes along the leading edge. Primary threat is going to be wind gust up around 70 miles per hour. Also hail and then maybe some localized flooding with the real heavy rain associated with these. They're moving pretty quickly, but some places could see a couple of rounds. That main threat is going to be here over the next two to three hours and then those will slowly uh, move on out. But we'll keep that chance into the morning and then eventually by tomorrow afternoon this should taper off and make way for really a pretty decent afternoon. Uh, rainfall totals, a lot of places starting to give it dry. Uh, but we could see widespread kind of one to maybe two inches of rain. So decent rains, unfortunately, it is coming at the cost of a little bit of severe weather as that happens. And uh, there's that northwestern complex around the Enid area and also the one in south central Oklahoma. Both of these racing off to the east. Temperatures ahead of that, 70s to 80. So here we are around midnight. That give or take a little bit is around the time this should move into the Tulsa metro area. So around the midnight time frame and also those storms in southeast Oklahoma. Oklahoma. And then you can see just some additional activity in behind this, just some rumbles of thunder, some downpour as possible into the early hours of the morning, even once that main line gets on past. By 7 a.m., a lot of this moving east, but still a couple of lingering showers possible through about the midday, late morning time frame. And then we should clear out, get some sunshine in the afternoon and then rebound back into the mid 80s. So once again, a decent day. Those temperatures really go up from here. Look at this on Monday, 103 in Altus, lots of sunshine, lots of 90s across the state. It'll be kind of a warm, muggy day. Uh, in the meantime, though, we're quiet. It is stuffy outside, very humid temperatures in the 80s, light south wind, dew point there at 70. So just a lot of juice in the air for these storms to work with as they roll east. And then we go into a bit of a drier stretch. Not to say on any one of these days there couldn't be a slim chance of an isolated shower storm, but right now those chances look around or less than 10%. We could get a front in here maybe toward the following Monday, but that chance right now is low. We're going to be pretty conservative that far out. And then temperatures. Once again, we're going to be on the warm side of life here. Those highs are round to mainly above normal. Keep in mind those average highs this time of year in that 90 degree range. And then going forward once again after tonight, stay weather aware tonight. We'll get into a much quieter, much hotter time frame as we head over the next several days. So that is a look at weather. We'll have more as needed through the night. Now we'll go ahead and send it on over to sports.